Hallelujah. Welcome back to the 11th hour today, man. What a music service we had today. Pretty awesome, huh? It was to me because uh, all I knew was to play the, the tune Perception and Illusion. Illusion and Perception, and we added Deception and all of that in there with it. And then it just went there. It went everything you heard, so nothing else was planned on that. We, we follow the Lord here on the 11th hour. Amen. And, I, you know, people think, well, there's just a bunch of uh, just over-the-top prophets. Yes, yes. That's a good name for us. Amen. You know, I, uh, I want to tell you about there was a vision that I had years ago, and uh, I believe it's, it's all pertaining to now. And I want to just, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about several different things and, and then we'll, before the program is over and uh, today anyway, before it, it rests today until next time. Um, I remember having this, this, this dream I had and, and it was such a prophetic dream that I've never forgotten it. And this was years ago. I dreamed that there was a, um, that there was this army and I came up on this desert place and it was a desert field. And I looked up, I could see the mesas up above me and they were flat, you know, mesa means flat like that. And it was flat up there. And I remember seeing this green pennant and I don't, <clears throat> I still to this day, I'm not sure exactly what that green pennant was, but it was there in the pole. It was stuck in the ground and the pole was leaning like that. And it was a pennant like a, a triangle type and it was blowing and the wind was hot. I'll never forget that. And I'm standing back over here looking over this field. And on this open ground, everywhere, as far as you could look, there were warriors laying on the ground. They didn't have armor on. They looked like um, uh, the old comic books of Conan the Barbarian. They looked like they had... I don't know, it was almost like these skirt-like things on, long black hair to their belts. And they all looked alike, and they were laying out there face down on the ground. <clears throat> and I remember this eagle would fly over and scream, and it would just come over, and I could hear it scream. And I remember the wind was blowing a hot, hot wind. And I looked up and saw the eagle flying, and it was you could hear it when it went over. I looked back down at that scene. They were everywhere. They were laying everywhere, face down. Swords were laying out just outside the, their hand, laying in the dust. And they were all dead. And it looked like every single person out there was dead. And I could, it was so real that my own hair was blowing. And it's to show you how long, uh, you know, it, but it was... It was blowing my hair, and, and I could see it blow theirs. It would pick up a strand of it and drop it, and, and it was a silent place except for that eagle. But when that eagle started to scream, all of a sudden, right there close to the pennant, I watched, and every one of these people laying there had these muscular, sculpted, like a, like a comic book would draw someone. And I, I saw one put their arm up like this on the ground, I saw the elbow, and I remember. And he started pushing himself up, and his hair was hanging way down. And he made himself uh, get up on his feet, and he stood there shaky, and he had his sword in his hand. And he, was, he, he stood back up. And then way off down, many bodies over from him, another one got up. And then over from there, another one got up until they just started standing up in different places. Shaky, but they stood with their swords in their hands. And I believe that time we're in is now. I believe that it covers a lot of different er eras of time, but I believe right now we've entered into that again. And it looks like it, and I don't know if these were prophets. They look like it. They look like they would have been prophets, like a, maybe in Ezekiel's time. I don't know but they looked like warrior, prophet warriors. And it looked like they were all dead. 
But when the eagle started screaming over the field, they started getting up and they started coming back again. You know, the face of the eagle and the four faces that fly on, on the living creatures or, or on those beasts that go around God's throne, the eagle is a symbol of resurrection. And suddenly they started getting up. And I believe that that's this time. If you really think that they did what they've done to this to the, to the president, notice how I said that. I said it the way I meant it. What they've done to the president in New York, if you really, then you're not seeing a big picture. There's something far more sinister. That's just has to be dealt with before the sinister plan could happen. All of this is connected. And so we have to be perceptive and see what's really going on or we're going to be deceived in perceiving an illusion of freedom. It's something that's not really happening. Now, you know, if you don't think the occult is involved, then you have to ask yourself, uh, there was telltale signs of it for years and years, like when Hillary uh, Clinton, you know, held the seance in the White House. That, that was a telltale sign that the occult's involved in, I mean, it started cropping out, and they really believed that they had it far enough, and they have it far enough now to do it. Now, now, uh, now let me show you something. Now, doesn't it strike you as odd that they would erect a statue that they called a Medusa statue? Now, I realize that it didn't, you know, it's not like Medusa and, and Perseus and all that exactly look like it, but it is. And they called it that. And uh, we found, and they had already erected one in a park in 2020. But they put this one on top of the criminal courthouse in January this year. So now show the picture of that. And look at what this looks like. Now just get a good look at that for a moment. Now this went up over the criminal courthouse. Where was it? Manhattan, I guess. And it went up there uh, to look over the city. And it was supposed to be in, see that thing around its neck was supposed to represent uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was the mother of all abortion uh, propaganda. I mean, this woman was probably responsible for killing more of the unborn than anyone. And so now you see what they erected up over that, showing how they've infiltrated the, the court system. And, but notice they erected this Medusa, a seductive spirit that uh, could turn men's hearts to stone, could turn their lives into stone, and could, no one could resist its gaze. But they put this thing up and it made it gold. It's a golden idol. So you know money's connected. So then they, they, they erected this thing over the courthouse, the criminal courthouse. And then so many months later, then they decide to indict the president over something that had to do with seduction. Now, you just think about it. Why would they put this up there first and then suddenly do it? It's because they know exactly what they're doing. They always know what they're doing because they're in the occult, you see. Now, and, and, and if you think it's not being propagated, is it a coincidence? You know, I remember Austin noticed this first when I started looking at this thing. Is it a coincidence that when that satanic worship service that was on CBS came out just a little while ago, that let's look at the Medusa spirit again. There's that idol. Look at it really good. And then suddenly, Madonna is always on the scene. And look at that. Wow. Show the statue. Then show that. How about that? Well, you see these things. And, and you start to notice these things. And, they, and CBS even posted, you know, on a Twitter, wasn't it a tweet? They tweeted out that said, let's worship. And it was at a satanic altar with transgenders around cages and things. And, now, and 
and hosted, and, and that particular worship service was uh, done by, what, what did he call himself, a non-binary? You know, like he's a bunch of zeros and ones. You know, non-binary. And then transgenders everywhere. And then suddenly this happens in Nashville. And then when it happens in Nashville, did who who went there? Yeah, they're headed. And and all of a sudden, you want you think this nation is not in trouble and somebody's not involved? Three little children were murdered, murdered. One of them, a pastor's daughter, who went who they went in to Target and was murdered in a church along with three adults, but yet nobody mentions it about them because suddenly it's everybody else's fault and, and to show compassion on the transgender group that started posting things on TikToks and all holding ARs and saying we're coming after you. And, and one of them has shown their, their gun in their hand and said, we will not show you mercy. Said you pray to your God for mercy because we won't show any. Suddenly they want, they're declaring war on everybody. All after that spirit was erected. Now you just think about all of this. And so they're dragging the president into the subjection of that spirit over the criminal courthouse. And people can't figure out what it is. Well, you just look at the guy who's trying to prosecute it. Look at his face. He's, he's not there. He's just doing the bidding of something. They just look. They just stare. Because there's something far more sinister involved. Now, do you not? does it not strike you as odd? All of this. And then I saw the, the clip, the TikTok, where the transgender prophet came on. I don't know if you saw this, but they made a staff out of a, I think it was like a gun barrel or something. I don't know if you look at it close. It could be, I don't know if it is or not, but it favors it. And they, it's like a crystal something on top or whatever that is on top. It's not real clear, but they're holding that staff and they're prophesying death and they're, they're doing it as a prophet type setting. But they're all proud of their prophet. They're proud of their satanic leaders. They're proud of all of this while the church bashed their prophets. Now, something's wrong with this picture. And you know what? And here is the thing, too. There are those that are caught up and being held captive by LGBTQ uh, X, Y, Z, whatever they are now, but they're, they're held captive by this organization and they're so confused by the time they're children and God, the whole time is trying to show them their real identity. But if Satan can steal an identity when you're little, I want all of you to listen to me. If the, the transgenders that are watching this program right now, listen to me. God has a real plan for you. That's not his plan for you. His plan for you was something far greater. It included peace. Can you imagine that? It included happiness. It included something that would fulfill every part of you. And Satan recognized a powerful gift on the inside of you. And it was a gift for ministry. And he recognized it and he came after it because he's a loser and he cannot create anything. There's no truth in him. It takes truth to create. So he comes after something God put there to twist it, pervert it, and turn it. You don't think it sounds funny? Should, does it not sound strange that three children could be murdered in Nashville with three adults? And then everybody wants compassion on the ones that, that did it and they're coming out threatening to kill more. 
And so what's wrong with this picture? And you can see the confused look. I want you to know something. God don't want you confused. If you'll call out to him right now, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. If you'll do that and mean it, say, I believe God raised you from the dead. And now I make you my Lord. If you'll do that, there's power will come inside you, come upon you to break every chain of bondage. Now watch this. Jesus looked at Peter one day and said, and looked at all of his disciples and said, who do you say that I, who do men say that I, the son of man am? So they said, well, some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're one of the prophets, you know, Elijah, one of the prophets or so forth. They started saying, some say you're this, some say you're that. He said, but who do you say I am? And Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. As soon as Peter acknowledged Jesus' identity, Jesus immediately looked at Peter and said, and you are Peter. That means the word Petros said, you're a fragment of this rock of revelation. This revelation is built, this great, huge stone revelation that he's the Christ said, you just became part of that. So the minute you acknowledge the identity of Jesus, he acknowledges your identity to you to let you know where you're headed. And so there's something great waiting on you. Don't let these people trap you into something. I'm talking about organizations that have weaponized themselves. Don't do that. The body of Christ could use such powerful gifts as you. So come in and let him show you your identity. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I remember in Missouri, somebody came to me and, and they had got delivered because I had said that there, that homosexuality was actually a, a, a cover, a stealing of a call of evangelism that you're, they're actually evangelists. That's why there's, there's, People in that lifestyle so speak out. They speak out, speak out. It's because that gift of God in them that he put in them when they were conceived to be evangelists, Satan's taking it and using that voice for him. Well, this guy got free. And then Austin and I was standing there, and then suddenly this fear came over his face when he realized how free he was. It replaced any smile. And he said, you don't understand. Now, this was his words, not mine. He said, they won't let you out. And he was afraid. And we had to pray that he could just kind of get out. He said, they'll call, they'll do, they'll say. He said, they won't let you out. You don't understand. Whatever that means, he said it. I didn't. But I know there's a way out. His name is Jesus. Amen. And he loves you. He loves you. I'm telling you, you've never known love until you know him. And he will give you. He said, I know the plans I have for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, it said, plans to prosper you, to give you an expected end. Hallelujah. So let that be hope to you today. Now, I wanted to, I wanted to bring that to your attention, that Medusa spirit. Then suddenly we see the worship service, satanic worship service on CBS, and they even acknowledged it was a worship service. It wasn't a ritual. It was a worship service. And then, and, and it included all the transgender theme and the non-binary theme and whatever they call it, whatever it is now, I'm not sure. And then you, then you go and you, then you see what happened the, up there. And then suddenly the Medusa spirit over the criminal court, made out of gold, it was a bronze, but it looked like gold, uh, up there. And if it's a bronze statue, then it stands for suffering. And so then, then suddenly they indict the president on a seduction thing. Now you think about it. Well, I wanted you to, to hear that today to make the connection you know, uh, I'm going to tell you something, and then we're going to show you a couple clips and before we close today. 
Some of you have heard me talk about before about how how uh, the art of war is a, uh, a psychological war. It's an ideology, uh, uh, ideological war, however you say that. And uh, if I said that right, <laughs> but you know, we're the ones that, I'm the one that said jackalous people too. <laughs> ideological warfare. That's what I'm looking for. Now, he, here is the thing. It's, it was taught by a Chinese um, uh, advisor to Chinese dynasties about 3,000 years ago, maybe more. And um, it's done in four stages. The Soviets used it a lot, but that's what's going on now. The first stage is demoralization, where you put your ideas into the colleges, universities, try to get your ideas into the society of a nation. And even though they reject your ideas, by the time they get to the fourth stage of this thing called subversion, the Soviets called it active measure, by the time you get it to that point, then their ideas that were so repulsive to you when it began actually looks like a viable option. So the first thing they do is they call it demoralization. It takes 15 to 20 years to brainwash a nation. And it has to have three graduating classes, you know, so that those people can leave and they're demoralized after that. They've been taught this mess, this crap. And so they're, they're demoralized and they go in and take over. They run for public office. They take over social programs. They do a media, all this kind of stuff. And they're, they're not home anymore. They can't see the truth. They don't know the truth. You can't tell them the truth. They can suddenly have, uh, call it hate crimes because against a group of people, because a group of people went in and murdered six people, then it's our fault for having hate crimes against them. Now, how twisted is that? So uh, that's from a demoralized generation raising another generation. Then they, once they have that done, they go to the next stage and you can see that stage. It's already in the nation. It's already in the world. Just watch media people, just watch their faces. They just look at you and you can tell them the truth. And they, they, they just stare off into nothing. They, they don't even know what you're saying. And as soon as you get through telling the truth, they just rumble and ramble on, you know, then the next stage is called, uh, um, destabilization. The first one takes 15, 20 years. Second one's about five, six years. And when you know when destabilization is being put in is when they start creating riots and they form groups like Antifa, BLM, uh, LGBTQ, anybody that can be rallied and whipped up into a frenzy. And then they send them in to destabilize a nation. They start holding riots in cities, uh, disrespecting authority, all this kind of stuff. Well, you've seen that happen. Then they go into the third stage. If they can ever destabilize a nation, then the third stage is called crisis. And it puts a country into such a, a mode of crisis that they can't pull back from it. And at that stage, if it ever takes hold in a crisis, then the, the viable option that was repulsive in the beginning suddenly looks like, or the repulsive option now looks viable to you. It looks like you actually would do that. And the communists would have said it this way, better read than dead. And now, you know, BLM said we are Marxist organization and so forth. Well, there you have it. They're responsible for destabilization. And then wicked rulers are going to create crisis. Well, you see all that started. I mean, crisis, crisis, crisis. Thought that nobody could pull back from it. Well, this is what the, and this is what happened with Czechoslovakia when they overthrew that. And the last stage is normalization. That's after it's already taken over, they won. And then it's indefinite period of time when they train the whole nation to be in their ideas forever. And so, you know, it was Brezhnev that said, uh, brotherly Czechoslovakia, I think one said is, is now normalized when they rolled tanks down the street. But see, we're not there yet. They keep trying to create crisis. Watch this. Soviets called it active measure, these four stages. In crisis mode, they said it takes, there's only two things that will pull 
a nation back out of a crisis mode and put it back on its path. One is a civil war or a foreign invasion. And the Lord told me a long time ago, he said, there's not going to be a civil war. He said, since there's not going to be a civil war, he said, there's going to be, he said, I'm going to invade from heaven. And then suddenly Asbury revival hits. And then one revival after another revival after another revival. Revival in Israel. Revival. Now there's one in California sweeping up big. And suddenly revivals are hooking up like a train. And it's, it's the foreign invasion. It is the invasion from heaven. And it is the revival that will pull the nation back from the brink. And all these politicians say, hey, just revival, just religion. No, I didn't say about religion. I said revival. And then there's such a thing called a Jesus revolution where it's a revolution of spiritual proportions, a spiritual revolution where ideas are changed. People turn back to God where all of a sudden people that's coming out of the LGBTQ are getting born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, people out of BLM, people out of Antifa, people out of these, these radical places are coming and getting saved, getting born again. They're coming in out of Satanism. They're coming in out of witchcraft. They're coming in from all walks of life. They're coming in cowboys, pierced, tattooed, hippies, gauged earrings, purple and pink hair, mohawks. They're coming in from everywhere, riding motorcycles, riding horses, riding, riding lawnmowers, whatever they're on. They're coming in to the kingdom of God. And it's called the Jesus Revolution. And that's what's happening right now. So I'm talking to the believers, do not give up, do not stop because back in the 70s when it looked like and from 68 to 72 when the first Jesus revolution happened and it looked like the, the earth was going to hell in a handbasket. Vietnam was going on and we sent our precious young soldiers over there and they were just used as, as bullet stoppers and all of that. But they were heroes just because the government went rogue don't mean that they wasn't heroes, they are. They still are. And you need to tell them they are. But even during that time, when it looked like politics had sold everybody out, a Jesus revolution hit. And now today we see the epitome of the occult trying to indict and arrest a president and mocking and laughing about it, bragging about it. As Robin gave that prophetic word, bragging about it. Well, Sunday, was it this past Sunday I think these clips are from, right? No, no, it was on 326. 326 is, now you really need to go back and watch the whole thing on Church International Program on 326-2023. And it was during that time, all of this, we started playing a song God had given Robin right before we started that day, uh, Wake Up the Mighty Men, This Is War. And we started singing that. And the next thing you know, man, it took us somewhere. And the Lord just wrote this whole song. And later on in that program, he just started playing the instrument. Himself. I just took my hands off the guitar and I've never been able to get Judah, my guitar here to do that. And suddenly it started doing it like it did in window rock, but it was a different voice at the tribal nations gathering. And so these prophecies came out of that. Maybe we can put the description of, and the link to that service. And you can go back and watch the music service and see everything that happened in its entirety. But listen to the prophecies that were given that day and, and just let them sink in your thinking. All right, go ahead and let's show those. Awake the warriors. What? 
heaven, the voice of heaven screams into the earth, freedom, 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 freedom in the blood, freedom in the blood, freedom in the blood, freedom in the blood, in the blood. revival. Began. So when the warriors awake, revolution begins. A changing of the guards, a changing of the ideas. Crusty old religion will be left in the dust. Crusty old religion will be left in the dust. Crusty old religion will be left behind this train. The train of revival. A more than survival. survival the Lord said give these words so yes Lord I'll give the words for those who have set their fingers and their minds to sabotage God's broadcasts God's voice all around the world those who have set their fingers beware says the Lord lest you invoke the prophecy of the finger for now your fingers are in grave danger your literal fingers you will put them in grave danger and so the Lord says I had my prophet tell it this morning take heed and beware for the prophecy of the fingers appeared and wrote on a wall fingers appeared and wrote on a wall and prophesied of a great fall fingers fingers appeared and wrote on the wall fingers appeared and wrote on the wall and told Fingers. Things will be shown, never be seen before. 
things will light up hid behind closet doors by Christmas it shall all be seen what things that you don't know what they mean but politicians know different nations see for they already know and they are very afraid you see for things are going to be seen, heard, told, 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 yes, told. How? First by prophets, just like prophets of old. Things will be told by prophets of old. Things will be told like prophets of old. As I give Israel a great victory, I will give a great victory into the hands of Israel. And you will know and you will see a great victory. Keep your hands off of Netanyahu. Keep your hands off of him. For I see the jackal winding down. I see the jackalus community winding down, spiraling into the ground. If you have a voice, use it. you to see those prophecies and the way they pertain to right now. You know, it wasn't uh, too long back. I was, um, I, I think it was, we could find it and we will find it, but there were several of them, but at least one day I know, I think it was after they raided Mar-a-Lago and I said, now you've unleashed the weather and the weather will fight. I believe it was that day. Maybe it was before that. I said it several times. But the Lord had told me, he said, now you're going to, they have unleashed weather. And the weather is going to go crazy. It's going to go wild after all of that. And look what's happened. Look what's taking place right now. I mean, look what happened a few weeks ago in this country. Look what happened just the other day in this country. Weather tornadoes, all these outbreaks of, of, of killing weather, not just bad weather. They have unleashed it because all through the scripture, the weather fights. It fights against corruption. And if you want to know who's bringing this weather, people say, well, it's acts of God. No, it's jackals bringing the weather. They're calling it down. And I'm going to tell you, they're doing things that you don't even realize that's happening. But the weather fights. The weather goes crazy when corruption gets out of hand like that. It's like a monster that, that I saw coming up out of the ground from underneath the ground. It's commanding things like this to take place. And we have to see it. Right before we went there, uh, Robin brought me this as they're doing this to the president in New York. What is it? Come and tell it. You could tell it right here. Yeah, come up here by me. A severe weather outbreak threatened 65 million in Midwest South with strong tornado risk peaking at night. For the second time in four days, a for, severe weather outbreak. For the second time in four days, damaging winds, large hail, strong tornadoes are expected from Tuesday afternoon through the overnight hours. At the same time, they're, uh, they're doing this to the to the president of the United States. And you think it's not connected. 
Absolutely, it's connected. I had a, a prophet send me a, a, a tweet that happened on April 1st after they decided to do this to the president and all. Then, uh, you know, people say, well, a lot of times it's, it shows things over New York. Yeah, but you ought to see this one. You ought to see the lightning that, that went over. I think it's the, the One World Center, the One Trade Building. I don't know if we can show that or not, but, but if we can, we'll show it. But you can look it up. It happened on April 1st. And this thing is absolutely out of hand. You're looking at corruption. You're looking at things that shouldn't be right now. And if you see earthquakes, uh, tidal waves, tornadoes, all this kind of stuff, you can blame that because they know they're doing it and they just keep doing it. I remember when the, the red swirling portal opened over the White House. They immediately hid that. Immediately. People went down there and got pictures and video of it. They immediately hid that. They went to the Sinai Peninsula and went up uh, on, uh, by the Red Sea there and began to, and they wrote 10 green new commandments because they believed a portal opened on Sinai. They believed it opened. And so they employed the occult to help them. And now we see right before they do this to Trump, they raise a Medusa statue, show a worship, satanic worship service on CBS, and all of this starts breaking out. And we think they're not involved in evil. Anybody who would murder the unborn and justify it is evil. They're operating in evil. And I want to tell you something. Believers have no, no business being a part of such things. They just should not even be tolerating it. So where are we now? We're watching an invasion from heaven take place. That's why the one world trade tower, all that lightning on it, everything. Everything. It's about bringing in a new regime. And there's actual plans that there never will be another president. That's the plan. It's just an illusion, perception and illusion. Hallelujah. Well, it's been a good 11th hour today. It's been a heavy 11th hour today. And so I'm just, uh, I'm glad to have been here with you. And uh, on behalf of the team, we're glad to be here on the 11th hour. We get to do such a thing as this. The Lord lets us do ministry like this, and it's just an awesome thing to me. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Don't be uh, worried. You stay in faith and you stay in prayer because God will protect the oil and the wine. Hallelujah. He will protect his oil and his wine. And remember, the invasion has begun. The foreign invasion that pulls the world and the nation back from a crisis. And that is the, the invasion from heaven, the revivals. Look and just go look at how many of them. We're working on a prophecy now to post for you, to show you that. And then the revolution, the Jesus revolution. Uh, even the movie came out. It has begun and it started on 314. Hallelujah.